Turn over with me to 1 John chapter 5. And let me read just a portion of scripture there. 1 John chapter 5. Let me, let, me, let me just read there verses 6 through 8. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is true. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, and I want you to notice here, Jesus is called, capital W, the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And notice now these three agree in one. That, that one that they agree in is Christ. And so we have here uh, a reference to Jesus Christ as the living word, the Bible as the written word of God. You cannot separate the Bible from the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people try to do that. But listen, when the Bible speaks, it speaks with the authority of God. We are, we are responsible to God, and we need to follow the Word of God. The church of Pergamos had compromised its stand on the Word of God. You see, until Jesus Christ returns, this is what God wants us to go by. And this is, the, this is what we need to live our life by. We need to know this book. I say to people all the time, look, how can you know God? How can you do God's will if you don't know God's will? Amen? So in order to know God's will, we have to study His Word. We have to understand His Word as best that we possibly can. So until Jesus returns, the Bible is our authority. Let me tell you, it's not the Bible and the Pope. It's not the Bible plus something else. That's why Martin Luther stepped out of the Roman Catholic Church and made the statement, here I stand, I can do no other. He was basing his convictions solely upon the written Word of God because that was his authority. It's not the Bible and the Book of Mormon. It's not the Bible plus something. Listen, the authority that Jesus Christ has left us with in the church until he returns is this book. He expects us to go by this book until he returns. When, <clears throat> excuse me. Get my voice straightened out. <coughs> when he returns, then we'll go by what he says. When Jesus Christ returns, we're going to go to heaven and live with him, and we'll, we'll have access to Jesus, we'll have access to the Father and the Holy Spirit, and we're going to live in heaven, and, and, we can, and we'll be able to go by what the Lord Jesus Christ says. But while we're here on earth, folks, this is what we go by. This is our rule book. One of the main signs of the coming of the great tribulation is when the church compromises the word of God. You don't take God by surprise. He knows, he knows the future. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows that the church is going to drift away. The Bible says there's going to be a falling away. And one of the great causes of the falling away is when churches compromise the word of God, when churches give in to the world. You see, the world wants us to give up our Bible because the Bible is absolute. The Bible says that God created everything. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Bible says that all men are sinners and all men are lost without the Lord Jesus Christ and that the only way you can go to heaven is through Jesus Christ. The world doesn't want to hear that. They want us to give up our Bible. Jesus says, stand on the Word of God. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 4. And let me read five verses there. And I want you to think about the falling away, people turning away from sound doctrine. What's going to cause it? I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. That's a preacher's job. It's not to be, you know, praise the Lord for education, praise the Lord for, for, for uh, people who know uh, uh, psychology, uh, who know history, uh, who, know, who know various matters. That's, knowledge is good. Knowledge is good. But my friend, the pulpit, from the pulpit, need, pe preachers need to, to, to preach and thunder from the pulpit the Word of God. 
Notice, preach the word. Boy, we need that today. I, don't, I believe there's a lot of pulpits where preachers are preaching the word of God today. I don't think you. I don't think it's. A, we've come to the place that the famine in the land, where where people run to and fro and they can't find the word of God. We're not to that place. We may be getting to that place. I don't know. But let me tell you, there's a lot of good churches today, and there's a lot of good preachers today who stand in their pulpit every Sunday and stand up and say, "Thus saith the Lord," and they preach the word of God right out of the King James Bible. Hallelujah. That's God's, that's God's will. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. Reprove. Rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now listen to the rest of this. For the time will come. We're looking at the great tribulation in the future. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen tomorrow. I'm not, going, I'm not saying it's going to happen in my lifetime. But I see some signs that indicate that, that it's at least a lot closer than it used to be. And the Bible says that we as Christians need to be on our guard and we need to be watching out because there's a time coming when people are not going to, to believe the Bible. They are not going to believe in the authority of Scripture. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. Teachers, preachers, pastors. But they will hear only excuse me. But after their own lusts, what they want to hear. They don't want to hear somebody to preach the truth. After their own lust, they, they don't want to hear somebody that'll say you're living in sin. They don't want to hear somebody get up and say, you can't do this and you can't do that and please God. They want somebody to pat them on the head and somebody to preach the love of God and say, God loves you and you're okay. Folks, I believe in preaching the love of God. Jesus Christ came. He died on the cross. God loves us. But let me, our God is also a consuming fire. People need to hear. People need to know. Certainly, first of all, about the love of God. I don't want anyone to ever come in the doors of this church that they don't hear the gospel. And you know I try to get it in every message. Some of you probably say, why is he always talking about Jesus on the cross and he uh, being buried three days and three nights and rose from the grave? Because that's my job is to preach the gospel. My job is to preach God's word. Every preacher's job is to preach the whole counsel of God, to preach the word of God. But once people know the love of God, they need to understand the holiness of God. That's not being preached very much today. I'm afraid. Verse 4. Well, let me go ahead with verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, Shall they heap to themselves teachers? That is, they will call preachers who will not preach the truth. And I'm going to tell you, a preacher who will not preach the truth, a preacher who will not stand in his pulpit and preach the truth about sin is going to be in trouble on Judgment Day. And let me tell you, churches who don't want a preacher to preach the truth is already in trouble. After their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears... And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, that is the word of God, because the word of God is truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things. Listen, Christian, your job is to watch. My job as a pastor is to watch and to be careful that the devil doesn't come in the door and, and, and walk down the aisle and sit here on the front seat and, and run this church and, and cause division and trouble and pain in this church. My job is to try to keep the devil out of the church. And so is yours. And I'm afraid the church of Pergamos had not done a very good job of that. 